Let's talk week six waiver wire pickups. I do think this week is crucial. There's some very obvious names, in my opinion, that you should target and other names that are kind of fool's gold. We'll talk through it. I've got over 25 names. So if you're in a smaller league or a larger league, there is something for literally everybody here. Let's start with people who are in smaller leagues. So if you're in an eight team or a 10 team league, I'm not gonna talk about the following names because I assume they're rostered in every 12 team format. But in case you're watching this and these names are available, you can pause and you can have a look at these names. But of course, Chuba Hubbard dominating a must start every single week right now. Names like Darnell Mooney, again, in people's rosters every single week reliable flex names. And then Tucker Craft, the tight end that we brought up on last week's video, um, is going to be highly rostered as well. But if you're in a small league, those names are for you. Okay, on to like the 12 and 14 team leagues out there. My 1A pickup of the week is Tank Bigsby. Let's talk about it. ETN, it should be said, is dealing with a shoulder injury right now. So we don't know how much that has impacted his game, his ability to play for this team in the last couple of weeks. However, what we saw in week five, in my opinion, is significant when projecting this backfield moving forward. For the first time ever, Tank Bigsby outsnapped Travis Etienne 23 to 22 snaps. And Bigsby also had more carries, more than double the carries that Etienne had, 13 carries to just six for Travis Etienne. Over the first four weeks, guys, Etienne was the clear RB1. Dominating snap percentages, Rushing attempt share of this team, he was just a dominant guy, but that clearly changed in week five. And I'd personally anticipate this being a split backfield in Jacksonville moving forward. I don't think Etienne's going to go away. I think this will be kind of like the Braylon Allen, Brees Hall. This will kind of be like the Bucky Irving, Rashad White. But the difference here is I truly think Bigsby can take this job with the way that he's been playing. He's been so efficient. If you take his 34 carries on the year, he's averaging over eight yards per carry this year, which is absolutely mental. Now, if you're in a fab league, I'm spending about 15 to 20% of my fab. I'm definitely not gonna dump all my fab on a player like this because again, I just don't see ETN not having a role. He's still such a good player um, who is also being quite efficient this year. All right, so my 1A was if you needed a running back. My 1B is if you need a wide receiver. Let's talk about Josh Downs. Last week on the waiver wire video, I told you guys that if I knew Flacco was the starter for this team rest of the season, I would blow my load for Josh Downs. All right, pause, wait. Now, since we said that last week, Josh Towns has only made me feel much more confident in that opinion because last week he had nine targets, 22 fantasy points. This week he comes out and has 12 targets, catches nine of them for about 70 yards, just under 16 fantasy points. Last week, again, tied with Michael Pittman for targets. And this week he leads the team 12 targets. Michael Pittman is in second with seven, clearly the number one target for Joe Flacco. In the last two weeks, since Josh Towns has been back completely healthy, you can see average targets per game. Josh Downs is at 10 and a half, Michael Pittman's at eight, and no one else even comes close to them in target share. Here's the issue. Here's why I'm not willing to completely blow the load, if you will, for Josh Downs, because I believe Anthony Richardson will start again for this team. They will not give up on him this early. Why? Because this franchise cannot build around Joe Flacco long-term. They just can't. I agree. Right now, if you want to win games, Joe Flacco is the name to put in there. But they need to have Anthony Richardson develop. Everything about the Colts is built around Anthony Richardson developing. When he's healthy, I'm sorry, he's going to be back out there, in my opinion. And I get it. Like, I want Joe Flacco to be out there as well because he's the wide receiver's best friend in fantasy football. But I just don't think that's going to happen. So, again, 15 to 20% of your fab. I just think his ceiling is going to be limited when A. Rich is back in that starting lineup. All right, at number three, let's talk about Jalen Tolbert. Man, I was prepping this video because I record it right after Sunday Night Football. And then Jalen Tolbert scores a touchdown, and I'm like, geez, it's going to be much more difficult to get him off waivers now. But have a game, Jalen Tolbert. This is a name that we've been talking about on the Stash uh, videos, the Stash series on the channel. First game without Brandon Cooks, who is on IR, by the way, and he gets 10 targets catches seven of them for 87 yards and a touchdown in a difficult matchup versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's actively looking more and more like a reliable flex option. He's going to be playing well above 75% of the snaps. He'll be the clear number two wide receiver for Dak Prescott. So I think you can spend about 15% of your fab to get a reliable name on your roster for your flex position. All right, the next player is a very interesting story. 
I really loved him coming out of college on our Dynasty channel. So if you don't know, this player has been in college for six years. They're a rookie. And the first four years, they played wide receiver at Iowa. And then the last two years, they switched to running back and they played at Purdue. And that name is Tyrone Tracy. Uh, I don't know if anybody out there started him like I did. Trust me, I didn't know he was going to be this good. It was a desperation play in my home league. I had so many injuries, I had no choice but to play Tyrone Tracy. But he played really well. He had 18 carries, 129 yards, over 7 yards per carry. He had two targets through the air. And of course, he had these opportunities because Devin Singletary had that groin injury. He led the New York Giants backfield in snaps, routes run, carries, and total touches. I mean, we're talking about a guy who was the clear number one when you look at how they used these two names. 45 snaps compared to 26 for Eric Gray. He was the dude on early downs, 42 snaps on early downs. He was there on short yardage situations as well. And of course, the elephant in the room is Devin Singletary. Look, Devin Singletary is a decent player. He hasn't been really anything special. I think if Tyrone continues to ball out like he did last week versus the Seahawks, I don't see how his role doesn't continue to grow regardless of Devin's health. So there's definitely a scenario here where he could overtake Devin Singletary in two, three, four weeks down the road. So I definitely think he's worth spending about 10% of your fab on this week. All right, are there running back needy teams out there? Because if you can't pay up for a Bigsby or you can't pay up for a Tyrone, how about these three names? These are good stashes, probably in deeper formats. But number one is Rashawn Johnson, who we have talked about before. He has solidified a role behind DeAndre Swift, and this offense is only getting better. He could be like the Walmart version of the Bucky Irving to the Rashad White, the Braylon Allen to the Brees Hall. You can see this week he had 10 touches, and in PPR leagues, he has a very interesting floor. You can see the way that they're utilizing him. He has more snaps than DeAndre Swift and on third downs and two-minute drills, and he's also getting goal line touches. He has three touchdowns in the last two games. He is like kind of Jamal Williams a little bit. If you remember back with Detroit, not that good, but he's like stealing so many vulture touchdowns from DeAndre Swift. So I definitely think he's worth a stash. Let's talk about Jalen Wright. Look, Devon Achan had a concussion. Jalen Wright comes in, has 13 carries, 86 yards, averages over six yards per carry. He looked very good. Devon Achan has a concussion. It looked bad, but according to a lot of sports doctors, they think he probably won't miss any time because keep in mind, the Dolphins have a bye this week. So the Dolphins will not play this week. And typically we see concussions. The guys will come back either one or two weeks after that concussion. So there's a really good chance that picking up Jalen Wright will lead to nothing because obviously if Devon Achan's healthy, he's their guy. And then Mostert is already back and healthy. So just be very cautious with Jalen Wright. All right, how about Blake Corum? This is the one that I'm most excited about of these names. Blake Corum finally got some action. All right, only 14% of the snaps this week, but six total touches. So when he was on the field, they were intentional about using him, and he looked very good with the touches that he had. Five carries, 25 yards. Do the math real quick. That's five yards per clip. And he got some touches on the goal line. He had two goal line touches to five for Kyron Williams. Almost punched it in for a touchdown. If he did, everyone's going to be talking about him. I could see his role continually grow over time. He's a great player. We know that from scouting his film out of Michigan. He scored more touchdowns than any running back in the past three years. I'm pretty sure. Don't quote me on that, but he's definitely top five. He had like over 55 touchdowns in the last three years. He's an absolute monster on the goal line. I definitely think he's worth picking up and stashing if he's available. Okay, the next name is very tricky for multiple reasons. So let's dive into it. That is Ty Chandler. I do think Ty Chandler is probably a trap. I think he's fool's gold this week. Why do I say that? Well, according to Pro Football Talk, the initial expectations is that Vikings running back Aaron Jones will be ready after their bye week, which is this week and week six. They have a bye week this week. Next week, they're saying Aaron Jones should be ready to go. But let's just play the scenario out where Aaron Jones doesn't play in week seven. Okay, so Aaron Jones misses one game in week seven. You can pick up Ty Chandler, but you have to play the Lions. The Detroit Lions rush defense is legit. I don't think you'd even want to start Ty Chandler if he was starting for this team against the Lions. So ultimately, in my opinion, I think this is fool's gold. I wouldn't spend up on this name. But if you can get him for cheap, then why not add him as a stash? All right, at number nine, let's talk about Adonai Mitchell. Guys, this is what Adonai Mitchell could do if he had a quarterback like Joe Flacco. Seven targets. 
Seven targets this week. That is tied with Michael Pittman Jr. for second amongst the team. Alec Pierce as well, to add on to this, his snap share is starting to go down and down and down. You can see the trend over the last four or five weeks, his snap share is starting to go down because they want to get Adonai Mitchell more and more involved. Again, same thing with Josh Downs though. The unfortunate reality is Anthony Richardson's probably going to play very soon, which makes Adonai Mitchell kind of fool's gold at this point. All right, at number 10, let's talk about the Rams in general. All the Los Angeles Rams. All right, Jordan Whittington, Tutu Atwell, Colby Parkinson. If you're in a position where you are drowning in injuries, and we said this last week, all right? We said Jordan Whittington's a spot start, Tutu Atwell's a spot start, Colby Parkinson's a spot start. I think that worked out for anyone who trusted me on that advice, right? I mean, we miss, but we hit there. And this is what I'm trying to tell you guys here again. Cooper Cup is probably back after their bye, which is this week. But with Cooper Cup there, I still think Tutu, Whittington, and Parkinson can be spot starts. When Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup are back, these guys become irrelevant. That's why we're not spending pretty much anything uh, of our fab on them. But if you are thinking in the future and you need a flex, a spot start, these are names that you can pick up. All right, at 11, do you need a quarterback? Kirk Cousins is a clear option here. 509 passing yards, four touchdowns on Thursday night football. And his upcoming schedule is the Panthers, the Seahawks, and the Bucks. So he's got a great schedule. That offense is firing on all cylinders, at least with the air it is. And then for Joe Flacco, if you're in a super flex league, why not pick the guy up? I mean, you could have started him this week and he probably would have helped you win your matchup. All right, and now it is time to talk about defensive streamers for week six. If the Eagles are out there, they were on a bye this week. It's very rare that someone holds a defense through a bye week. But if the Eagles are out there, they play the Browns. The Browns give up the second most points to fantasy defenses right now. Deshaun Watson is taking record pace amount of sacks per game. So they're an option. The Texans at the Patriots. Patriots are top five in points allowed to defenses. Falcons at the Panthers. Panthers are top five as well in that same category. So those would be my top three pickups if you have any of those guys out there on the waiver wire. And last but not least, we'll talk honorable mentions. If you're in a 14 team, 16 team, whatever, a large league, these are some names that you can consider. Daria Gumbawale, if Joe Mixon continues to miss time, is clearly a valuable name because of the work he gets out of the air. Alan Lazard, they're continuing to target him. He's continuing to do very little with those targets, but they like him. Same with Tyler Conklin. Uh, Dalton Schultz has a role if Nico Collins is out. Eric All is a really interesting name to stash in deeper formats. Xavier Hutchinson is a really, really deep in your bag flex play if you're really desperate in a deep, deep, deep format. And then Rashad Bateman is getting more and more looks. He's definitely worth a, a stash as well. But that is it for today, guys. I appreciate you watching the video. Do me a favor, smash that like button to show some love. Subscribe if you like the content. And the last thing I will say is if you have a tough fantasy question, start, sit, trade, maybe you want your team reviewed, check out the pinned comment. There's a link to our website where you can ask us a question at any time and we can answer it for you on stream if you prefer. And by the way, if you haven't signed up yet on the Flock site, use the promo code LAND, L-A-N-D, if you use that promo code, you'll get access to free creator rankings, expert consensus. You get access to the team analyzer. You'll get access to the trade calculator. So some great features there for free just by signing up with the promo code LAN. I appreciate you for watching it. Let's get the waivers right and let's make some better teams in fantasy football. Now that those idiots are done talking, who needs some rankings? Hell yeah, I need some rankings. Then use promo code LAND, L-A-N-D, for 30% off any membership at flockfantasy.com. Oh.